So at this point, we've seen the ability to do social sharing and sending emails. That means we've got a brand new version of our project, a brand new version that we should then re-upload uh, for, for people to get a, you know, an update on our app. So this then requires us to go through the process of version 2, creating a new version for our project. Uh, we're going to look at signing our APK in a moment. Before we do that, uh, I'm going to make sure all my code is saved, and I'm going to close it. I don't need to edit this code for the moment anymore. And then I'm going to open the config.xml file of my project. There's something we need to do here now that we're doing a version 2. At least one thing. So I'll go back to my folders project, my projects folder, and I'll open the config.xml file. We need to change at least one thing. Android version code. The app stores will not accept you uploading a new version of your app if it's the same version code. This has to be incremented by whole numbers every time you're going to upload a new version of your app. So simply, we change Android version code to 2. Next time we upload a new version, 3 and 4 and 5, etc. ID should be exactly the same because it's the same app we're updating. Who's ever already installed their app on our app on their device, we're going to get a new version of it and it's tied to that ID number, that package ID. Optionally, what you could change is version, but you should change it. What needs to be changed is Android version code. As for version, here, you have to decide how to change this. We haven't altered our app so much that I personally would put a 2 there. We have not done that. To me, a 2 there would be that we've added new features and also changed the interface. It's a brand new app, basically. No, it's still the same interface as before with new features. What I would do is change this number here. We were at version 0, the very first release, and now this is 1. Or 2. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. But maybe so it's obvious, I'll do a 1.2. And then the final piece here is the date. And today happens to be 8.16.16. So this can be anything, truthful or not. But that's kind of nice and symmetric looking. 16.16.16. Wait a minute. 16.16.8. That's what I meant. So um, that version, then, that's what I'm going to have that. That's like the forward, the front-facing number for the user. The user will see that in their device, and you've got version 1.2, oh whatever. The user will not see this number, but the app stores need that number. Nothing else will change here, of course. This is my... Um, this is my app. I shouldn't change anything on it besides version code, Android version code. So I'm going to save that and close the config file. And so to reiterate, at least change your version code, Android ver dash version code. Increment it by one. Okay, so I need to get back to my command prompt and I pulled up my uh, handout number 8 again, and I need to do the part about building again. I don't have the command memorized, but I have a handout. So I'm going to pull this up again. I, I need to do taco, build, android, dash, dash, release, etc. Assuming I remember where my JKS file is, where your JKS file is. So taco build android release dash dash remember there's a phantom dash dash there for some reason but we need it dash dash key store equals wherever you've got your key store mine is on my flash drive
jks and then dash dash alias and whatever alias is in that key store that you set up previously and you'll need to remember your password from when we created this key store again this is the importance of this we created that key store last week and I said for you to back it up and save all that info and such because you're going to be referring to it every time you're going to rebuild your app to publish to a real app store. Check your spelling, run that, and then wait for the command prompt to appear. Put in your password for both the alias and the key store and that will then let you go to the next steps here copy the release apk file up to the next folder i'm going to change that to my app 2 release because now it's version 2 of my version code 2 of my project there we go so password I believe there is a time limit on that. If you wait a long time, it'll time you out. So remember to put your password in in a timely manner. If any errors happen here, check your spelling, check the name of your JKS file, make sure that it's the alias that you had created previously, make sure that your password is correct, Make sure that the path to your JPS is the right path. Okay, so I got a success, and my handout then says to go back into your folder, deep down there, into the outputs folder, to um, retrieve your newly compiled APK file. So inside of my apps, inside of my project, inside of platforms, inside of Android, inside of uh, build, inside of outputs, so I have APK, I have the latest version of my Android release project. I will copy that to where I'm storing all my APKs. Mine are just uh, on the topmost level of my apps folder. Paste it in there. And this previous one, I can keep it or delete it or I, I keep them and I'm going to put a version 2 number on the one I just compiled. See, that was the one from last week. This is the one from this week. So now I've got a version 2 of my APK. Okay, so I've got a new version of the APK for the moment. I can close Notepad, I can close Command Prompt. And we'll look over the relatively easy process then of releasing version 2. The hard part is adding the features and, and code to the app and compiling. And then actually updating it on the App Store is not that difficult. So I will now go over to the, to the App Store developer.amazon.com and I'm going to sign in with the same credentials that I've used previously 
top right corner, sign in. So once I've signed in, uh, I get this developer communication. Like I said, this is when I submitted it. And apparently within the same day it was approved. Let's see if there's some time here. Uh, no, there's no time, but within the same day my app was approved. Anyway, under the dashboard here, communications, and then at the bottom, one of the uh, one of the screens that I have here is, well, there's your app. That's the same as if I had gone at the top where it says apps and services. Either way, I see my app. Either way, if from the dashboard screen I click on my app, I have add upcoming version, or if I go to my apps and services screen, and then hover over my app, I see, I see some gears on the right side. If I hover over there, hover there, add upcoming version. So this is version 2. So a couple of ways to get to the same screen. I'll click add upcoming version. We'll create a new version of the app. That's fine. It's going to be a version 2. So I have my previous tabs and I have a brand new release notes. We'll look at that one in a moment. This will be a list of what's new. Uh, what's new with my new version of my app? So you see this all the time when, when you're on your device and there's a new version of your, of your app coming up, it'll tell you, here's what's new. So we should take a moment to write that, although it's rather optional. We should detail what's new, so we'll get to release notes in a moment. Under binary files, I notice that sometimes it doesn't show it right away. Um, I have my SDC1 and add another binary. If yours only says my SDC1, I find that a good way to kind of wake this up is to switch over to a different screen, like release notes, and then go back to binary. Now it says, okay, there's the version 1, and then there's going to be a version 2, upload another binary. So I'll do that, upload another binary. I'll select here, Upload Binary, and I'll go to my flash drive where I've got my version 2. This is version 2. One little quirk that is not a problem at all according to what I've read is that we had in our XML file Android dash version code 1 and version code 2. But for whatever reason, when we fully compile it, it becomes a 1.8 and a 2.8. If we were to do, then do Android version code 3, it would be 3.8. For some reason, Taco adds an 8 to it, or Amazon or someone. But it's not a problem because, again, it's not the same version code. It's not 1 or 1.8. It's just it's something besides that. Higher number than before. And I'm seeing here that it's the 1.2.2016-1608. Everything is fine. The DRM is fine, binary, whatever. Remember, uh, we had removed the extra permissions previously. If you haven't done it now, I would think about doing it. Device supported. Um, 
This is okay for the moment. English certify. And then um, this is going to be called binary1. Actually, I'll call this my SDCE2. No testing instructions, and I'll save. Please select at least one option in the device support section. Hmm. Okay. Non Amazon devices, edit device support. Enable non Amazon devices. Targeted by another binary in the current version. All right, I'm going to remove. Okay, uh, what I was doing was, um, okay, accidentally, I was going to add two binaries rather than replacing the existing one. Uh, so I took that back. I removed the binary. I had my SDC one, which was the original one, and then I had said, let's add a new binary, but that wasn't the right path. So I removed the binary of the new binary. I'm still then with the original one here with that original name because then what I could do here is replace my SDC1 with my SDC2. Since I've got a copy of it saved elsewhere, I can bring it back if necessary. But here I'll upload then version 2. This then finds compatible devices. Okay, that's fine. This will be two right here. And I'll save. The path that we were going a moment ago was more like to have a binary for some devices and a different binary for different devices. Apologies. I meant we wanted to replace the old binary with this new one rather than having multiple binaries. But we saw it was it terminology didn't quite explain itself. So we should have then one binary with this new number here. Question? A question. I mean, the field, when you're successful, I have two. If I put two, why is the release on one side? Another is release. And the release, this is like last week. I mean, which one I should get? None, none, of those, none of those, because if we go back to the output here, uh, it seemed like it didn't, it didn't do it because you're missing, you're missing here. You are saying the key store, but you're missing the part of the handout that says also add an alias. So it's not. Um, yeah, it's totally annoying it because this didn't build properly. Go back to the handout, and you're missing a part of that command where it's. This is the creation of this particular okay. mm -hmm. section. Okay. So we didn't part of the, uh, this 
what would you find in dash radius? That's what it's found in the Once you add that part, then you will have the proper uh, release safety. Okay. Okay, so I've got uh, the new version of my APK listed there, properly configured devices, everything. Now then, I need to do a release notes. What I said about this being optional is it does need to be green, but what I mean is what you write here could be very terse. But I'm going to go into edit the release notes. Release notes. Please describe what changes you have made in this release. Okay. So um, we did basically three things. Um, we made it uh, so that older devices can't handle pouch. So we should make something like note. Uh, full compatibility, compatibility Android 4X Plus, just to let people know that for the full compatibility, you need the newer version of Android, number one. So, what we also did was a um, new feature. Um, contact developer we also added a new feature. Share app via social media. So it's it's just a list of what have we changed on the app. If we had done a rewrite of the interface, then I would write here new user interface. I could think also like a marketer. Do you ever look at your your apps and it tells you there's a new version? But do you ever look at what they write? Look at what the developers write. Some of them simply give you a very logical answer. And some say, welcome to version 3x of our app, and we've got some amazing things for you. And then you write the points. So however you want to say this to your users, whatever your company, you know, your voice of your company is, take advantage of it here. This is fine for us, but uh, we could very, very easily say bug, bug fixes and improvements, and we're done. And a lot of developers do that. I would recommend be detailed because then that shows that you know what you're doing, that you value your customers, that you want to tell them what's in store for that update. Some people don't want to do updates. They feel like, well, is this going to slow down my system? Is it going to take away features? So I added those release notes. I've got all green now on the, on the new item, the, um, the seventh tab. 7 out of 7. In my case, I think I'm ready to go. And if yours is as well, you could publish it if you'd like. So I will submit. With some amount of time, this claims that by the 17th, 9 p.m., the app will be available most likely much sooner than that. Submission history. Back on the dashboard, this particular app live and under review. The current version is live. People have that version, and then an upcoming version is going to take over it. People will get the notification on their device that uh, a new version is out, and they can choose to update or not. So that's basically the process for version two, writing our code updating our listing, mentioning what's new, and submitting it again. We're going to get toward the end of our main lecture in just a bit. Any, any questions on what we've done at this point? Okay, we'll end the main lecture. Uh, we'll have a little lab time. I recommend if you haven't gotten to the point of actually publishing your app, we've got a little time. Um, publish your app to really get the full experience of this class and its processes. Um, and then on Thursday we'll come back the last day and we'll have the final touches on things. We need to talk about 
uh, targeting multiple devices. We've been focusing on Android the whole time. We're going to touch on other devices. The, the short answer though that because we're using Cordova, uh, it's somewhat relatively easy to target all the devices. Uh, we'll talk about alternatives to this because the way we've been doing it is not the only way to do it, uh, to create cross-platform apps. We'll touch on a couple of other ways. We'll also touch on a little bit on marketing and advertising. Right now, we're kind of relying on word of mouth, telling our friends and family to download. We'll touch on word of mouth. We'll talk about using social media a little bit to get the, the word out of our app. And um, then we'll be at the end of the course. So we'll have some lab time. I'll upload the videos. And uh, if you have any questions, call me over. Remember to sign in if you came in late. And um, we'll do it again next time.